Hello. Uh, I'm going to do a little video on uh, coaches wearing skates. This is my third time doing this video. I keep losing it somehow. Let's hope this one sticks. Um, so about 18 years ago, the only time I had this overtly mentioned by a parent was about 18 years ago. I was teaching a boy named Jeffrey who was kind of new out of can skate. And I remember there was one day where I was rushing from rink to rink to rink to, and he was kind of a 45 minute lesson in the middle of those ranks. So I wanted to be able to, I didn't put my skates on because I walked out all day because I knew I had to be in and out of the rink pretty quickly. Um, and that rink had a door right by the uh, entrance door where my car was, where the parking lot is. So I could just pop in five, 10 seconds, open the door, coach him and then pop out really quickly. So I didn't bother. And the mother, um, I gave out a bill, I gave out bills every two or three weeks at that point. I gave out a bill shortly after, or maybe the mother mentioned it beforehand, I can't really remember, but the mother basically said, um, so you're not billing for the lesson that, uh, the half hour lesson you gave uh, without your skates on. And I was like, what? This is after I've been coaching three or four years. And I was really shocked by the comment. I was like, well, what do you mean? Yes, I'm gonna coach for it. I'm gonna charge for it. Um, You know, there's there's nothing about not wearing skates that diminishes my ability to coach a skater. For people who that are new to skating, um, it, at competitions and test days, there's a few little exceptions. If you're a dance partner, you'll bring skates. And in Star One, they recommend that coaches have skates on the ice to help their kids with their first competitions. But other than that competition event, Star One, and dance partners, um, coaches never bring skates to competitions or test days and because of that we have to be able to give feedback and correct and coach uh, without having skates on and in my opinion if you're never practicing that b between uh, test days and competitions between events you're not developing those skills and you may end up getting to a competition or test day where you're not able to um, properly vocalize or demonstrate your, your correction, your last minute, uh, um, you know, you might have to have an emergency problem that you have to fix at the last minute that you might not be familiar with or able to because you're, you're used to having skates on and being able to demonstrate things or, or walk through things. So I find it really helpful, not only to me, well, first of all, to me, in between events, to occasionally, every couple weeks, come in without skates on so that I get in, used to the, um, the, the, the slightly different methods of teaching you have to do when you have boots on instead of having skates on. But also, I find it helps the skater when, it would help the skater adjust to the conditions of testing and competitions if they're also used to you occasionally being off the ice in your boots. Um, you know, it's a completely different feeling when your skater, when your coach is standing on the ice with you in skates and can follow you around the ice to watch you or can walk through or demonstrate things on the ice. Um, then when they're off the ice and you have to kind of, the skater has to envision that they're wearing skates if, they, if they're demonstrating something, if they're demonstrating toe point or a leg position or an arm position or a hip position. Um, it can be a completely different experience and I think the skaters need practice uh, getting familiar a lot familiarize with that system as well so especially when we're getting up to um, test day where you're getting into test day formats that involve me not wearing my skates I like to come in at least a couple days to run through all the tests with my shoes on um, so that we're both so that we're kind of eliminating one of the variable changes that happen at events that might uh, disrupt our ability to be able to communicate with each other um, we need to practice the communication with skates now, the concern I get occasionally from parents, I, I, I really don't understand the concern. Occasionally, I don't wear skates just because I, I, I'm driving into the rink and I'm arranging my lessons. I'm planning my lesson plan. And I realize that either none of my lessons require skates um, or maybe nine out of ten don't require skates. And then I adjust the tenth one to, to some, why would I put my skates on for 10% of the time while on the ice? The lar vast majority of the time, for anybody who watches skating, most coaches just stand on the ice. They don't really um, demonstrate any skating-related stuff. In many cases, coaches are incapable of demonstrating what their skaters are doing, especially when you get to medium and higher levels. Uh, so 
the importance of having skates on is is largely I think it's symbolic. Um, but my concern is that occasionally when I don't wear skates, I, I've had skaters even recently, and uh, I haven't had parents say anything, but I've had parents, uh, kids say, uh, did you forget your skates today? Or occasionally I wear hockey skates to keep uh, keep familiar with the different balance point of hockey skates, and they're like, did you forget your figure skates? And, and I did partner a couple times in hockey skates where I did literally forget my figure skates, or I figured they were too cold to uh, put on and the hockey skates were warmer because they were in my house or whatever. I have various reasons for switching skates or various reasons for not wearing skates. And I think sometimes people think that it, it's a matter of forgetfulness or disorganization or flightiness or whatever they want to call it. And very rarely is it. It's usually planned to some degree or another. Um, now there are specific lessons where you absolutely have to wear skates and especially choreography, um, demonstrating dances, new dance patterns, new skills patterns, uh, new exercise patterns on the ice. Uh, but even then, if I bring a um, some kind of note uh, or even a marker that I can draw on the ice or the boards with, it, it, it's quite possible to conduct any lesson without skates on. And the reason that's, you know, the reason I've thought about this is uh, if I ever break a leg or an ankle or something and have to go two months without skates, am I going to be able to keep coaching? Yes, I absolutely am. I might have to push some of the things uh, down a little bit further down the list, wait two months to do them until I'm back on skates. But I can definitely fill months of lesson time without ever having to be on the ice demonstrating things. I might have to bring skaters on the ice to demonstrate with for me. Um, but it wouldn't be that hard to rearrange lessons for a month or two months or three months to to be still fairly maximum efficiency without having skates on. Um, so I guess that's it. That's I just wanted to clear that up. I feel like I forgot something. I guess not. Bye.